Hi everybody, it's 314 React here. Today we are looking at RTX Remix for Unreal Tournament 2004. This is an RTX conf file uploaded by someone called RuneStorm. Now, this doesn't have any instructions for actually installing RTX Remix, so what we're going to be doing is following the installation instructions from the Max Payne RTX Remix mod that we looked at a couple of weeks ago. So the first thing you want to do is obviously download the RTX conf file from ModDB. All links for this will be in the description. So you download that, then you want to go to the installation instructions on Max Payne RTX. Now the auto downloader now no longer works unfortunately so we're gonna have to go to the githubs and download remix dxvk and the bridge all separately and manually. When you click on the RTX remix github you can go straight to the releases on the right here and download the latest version. Grab the release zip, download that to the same folder as the RTX conf file. Then you want to go to the dxvk remix github repo. Because there's no releases on the right hand side here you have to go to actions and go to the latest top one here and then scroll down and download the release zip. Now you won't be to download this from this page unless you have a github account but github accounts are free so you just sign up get the account set up and then you'll be able to download that so download that release and then do the same thing for the bridge remix so to actions to the top file and then down and download the release zip then the other thing you need to download is the d3d8 to d3d9 converter which takes all of the direct x8 calls from unreal tournament and converts them to direct x9 which is required for rtx remix to hook into so again you go to the github that's linked in in the description you go to the latest releases and you just download the d3d8.dll now of course you'll also need obviously a copy of unreal tournament 2004 which could be tricky if you don't already have it on steam or already have a gog version or the original cd or dvds because epic for some reason decided to delist all of the old unreal games so there's a couple of solutions here pretty much the easiest one now if you don't already have a copy on steam or gog would be to just find an old dvd on ebay somewhere or an old cd on ebay somewhere and if you don't have a dvd drive on your pc you can just get an external usb dvd drive and install it from there so that's a bit of a tricky one bit annoying because epic decided to remove them for some reason as i said there's a link to an old video that i did in the description that goes over that and you also need obviously an rtx card because i don't believe this will work on intel or amd's ray tracing and you'll also need the latest drivers as well just make sure everything's compatible but once you have all those downloaded so you've got your three zip files here first thing you want to do is open up the remix zip and then you want to go to Unreal Tournament 2004 installation folder and go to the system folder and what you want to do is just drag all those files over into the system folder overwriting anything that's in there and then you want to go to dxvk remix.zip and what you want to do is open up the .trex folder that came out from RTX Remix and you just want to crank in all these files into that trex folder and overwriting anything in there and then finally you want to go to the bridge remix zip and you want to take all of that and again drag and drop that over into the system folder again overwriting anything in there and then you just drag the d3d8.dll also over into the system folder and that ensures that everything has been installed for rtx remix and finally you want to get the rtx configuration file that you download from mod db and just drag and drop that into the system folder as well and then what you want to do is rename it and i'll remove the dot on the one so that it just becomes rtx Conf. If you open up that rtx.conf, you can see it's got the configuration for the textures to apply PBR to them. I don't believe this mod has got any AI upscale textures or anything. It's just, I think it's just referencing textures to give them certain italic constants and certain features because the download just has the RTX conf folder. It's not like the Max Payne one where you actually downloaded a whole bunch of textures or the Tomb Raider RTX one where you download a whole bunch of extra textures as well. Unless I've missed something. Someone let me know if I have missed something. So I believe this is just referencing textures that already exist existing game and it's applying certain PBR functions to them. So again, there's other things you can change here. We'll probably have a look at some of these. You can change most of these in game using the RTX menu, but now you should be ready to go. So now you can actually fire up the game. The first thing you'll notice is the old, the way it's meant to be played, NVIDIA. 
opening and you'll see in the top left hand corner welcome to nvidia rtx remix at any point during gameplay press alt x to access the remix menu mod and you should see some extra shading and lighting there and that's how you know it's working nicely now i've noticed this only works in a few levels i think because of the reference textures if the textures aren't referenced in that configuration file then you will get a blank looking map so for example if we go to antilus all you get is a completely blank map with some lighting and some fog effects and some particle effects but absolutely no textures being referenced whatsoever so not all the maps work but some do so the first one we're going to check out is deck 17 because i know that works Play. and here we go so you can see all of that extra lighting, shadowing, ambient occlusion. It's quite bright in some areas. And there's some flickering textures, as you can see here. So I think there's still some work that needs to be done. Yeah, so there's a few weird bugs with it. And we're going to see a few more of those bugs as we go on. But generally, it's working. And you can see there's some really nice shadowing there. Okay, so after all that, let's look at some performance. So with DLSS performance, we're rendering about 98 frames per second. If we turn it to full resolution, we go down to, wow, 30 FPS. So yeah, this is pretty heavy duty. Again, even though it's an old game, there's still a lot of computationally expensive stuff going on here. I imagine there's quite a bit of CPU being taken up by the D3D 8 to 9 wrapper. And there's a whole load of overhead as well uh, with interpreting it from D3D 9 to RTX Remix. I think which uses Vulkan. So you've got two layers of wrapping API instructions there. Then you've got all the ray tracing on top of that. So if we turn it to quality, we get 67 FPS. And you can even turn it up to performance. So, yeah, it's going to hit your frame rate pretty hard. But if you use DLSS, especially performance or even ultra performance, you can get quite a decent frame rate out of it. Like ultra performance is pretty much maxing out my monitor's refresh rate. So if we turn off VSync in here, see if we can get that frame rate to go higher. There we go. Right. So now we're at 166 FPS. So that's with ultra performance. We have 168 FPS. And then as we go to performance, it takes us down to about 100. And as we go to balanced, about 70, 77 to 80. And then over to quality, it takes us back to about 60 to 70. So I'm going to leave it on quality for now. Now, of course, what you can also enable is DLSS frame generation. So we tick that, and that takes us to 100 FPS. So we could even go to full resolution. Even full resolution with DLSS frame generation is 55 FPS. And this is with an RTX 4090 and a Ryzen 7700X with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So this is how heavy this is. So what we're going to do is just put it on DLSS quality and frame generation on. And again, just like we looked at the previous videos, you can turn on use white material textures, and you can really see what's going on in the lighting engine. So you can see all the shadowing and lighting there being applied. And then of course you have a whole bunch of other settings here as well, parameter tuning with the textures. So you can change the albedo scale, metallic bias, roughness scale, stuff like that. We're not gonna play around with that just yet, but you can use that to make things really ridiculously shiny. Now what I'm gonna do is, I've basically been through virtually every map in the game and I'm gonna go through them and just take a quick look at the ones that work or at least work enough to get a bit of a view of them and see what the RTX Remix adds to them. And then we will have a look at some of the roughness scales and see if we can get this to look really ridiculously shiny so essentially none of the assault maps work so we will be leaving all of those but we can go to onslaught arctic stronghold so this is one of the maps where there is some shading and lighting effects but there's also a lot of missing textures like here and it also looks very flat because there's just so much missing stuff but it is an open area and it does have a skybox and it does work and you can see some shadowing under the cars here so again if we go to material you can see the lighting that's being applied here so it is definitely having an effect it's adding some really nice sort of ambient occlusion and shadowing there all part of the same ray tracing algorithm so it all blends together perfectly lighting ambient occlusion shadowing stuff like that and you can see some of that dynamic lighting there oh, oh oh you can see some of the particle effects there i think that's where rtx remix is picking up on those particle effects and doing something a bit funky with them because it's misinterpreting them but you can see a real-time shadow there from that light and it changes based on the position of the car and the light and the shadow of course changes and gets softer the further you get away from it so that's a really really cool effect some of the textures look really odd here 
a little preview of what an outside area could look like. Next up is Onslaught Urban. Now this is one of the maps where it will kind of work and when you turn in certain directions everything goes dark for some reason. We can, if we face the right direction, we can get a bit of a view just of how cool this can look in a sort of industrial urban environment. So some really nice shadowing there. Again, if we go to the white materials, you can see all the shadowing that's being added. Nice soft shadows. You can see in these areas here, some really nice soft lighting. And you can even see some of the weird light cones here, which look like textures to make it look like there's volumetric lighting, to basically fake volumetric lighting. And it looks like RTX Remix is interpreting that as some sort of opaque texture and is applying some sort of refraction on it. But yeah, you can see the lighting on the gun there, self-shadowing. Can look a bit flat in some areas, and it looks a bit strange as some of the lights disappear and get culled. And you can even see the shadow from the vehicle there. And the really distant shadow from the vehicle there as well on the ground. That's really cool. So I just wonder as well, if we go into the options, I was just thinking, let's turn all the shadows off. Dynamic lighting, let's turn that off as well. Yeah, no, nope, st still goes funny. Oh, yep, yeah. well, look how much, like how, how bizarrely the lighting changes for some reason. So I've turned dynamic lights off. I'm not sure how much that will affect the, the ray tracing, but it still seems to be fine. Still seems to be taking those lights. I don't think those settings are affecting the path tracing too much. And some nice shadowing coming from that. So that shadowing is being caused by the path tracing. Yeah, look at that. Really soft shadows. You got those lights there. And it's causing the really nice shadows. As you go past the light, it's causing that shadow to go up that wall there. I think what I'll do is I'll keep the character shadows off, but I'll turn the dynamic lighting back on because I think this should be able to interpret the dynamic lights and add path tracing to them. So let's move on to the next level, which is DM Albatross, which is a bit of an outside area, but it does work. You can see there's again a lot of missing textures. The water effect is a bit funky. If we go to again the white material textures, you can see the lighting that's being added there by the path tracing. Some weird blocky square bits down here. Again, that probably needs some tweaking. I think a lot of this will come down to taking the existing textures and using the RTX Remix tool to update them using AI and make them properly physically correct for physically based rendering, stuff like that. And that'll probably allow more compatibility. This looks a bit flat, but it is still applying some of that lighting because it depends how RTX Remix is interpreting the global lighting from the skybox, I'm guessing, rather than more dynamic lights or point lights. It still looks quite nice. Gives a kind of a view of an outside area. And I'm surprised this one works because it's got a full-on skybox and this doesn't seem to go completely blank at some points. So the next level is Crash. Now this is a really nice one because it's all internal. So a lot of the lighting works quite nicely. Got a nice bit of shadowing there. Some of it looks a bit over bright. Again, you've got really nice stuff like this. You've got a light here pushing out some really, really nice shadowing coming from the adrenaline here. Kind of some weird stuff going on where you can see the shadow here. Then as you go around the shadow kind of disappears again i think that's to do with the game engine and how it's handling the lighting really soft nice lighting in fact we can see that in more detail of course using the white material textures yes yeah, so you can see the shadows there yeah there you go yeah that's what we're seeing there's a lot more shadowing here then as we go around that sort of shadow sort of fades off so there must be a light getting culled somewhere but still we can see the lovely soft lighting here from the adrenaline and again the sort of ambient occlusion under the stairs there some nice shadowing from this fan here spinning around. And you can imagine how good this would look with the textures updated to look more metallic and reflective. And you could start making this probably look better than even the latest UT4. But yeah, that just looks really nice even, even now. So you can even see some sort of lighting happening up here and some interactions with the fog coming out from those fans. So yeah, adding a nice effect there. See, some transparency it works really nice with, like those sort of sprite-based things coming down there. The other thing you could probably edit out is these artificial volumetric lights, get rid of those. And you could probably add some sort of refraction to these as well, these health files. Probably a reflection over the world around them as well could be added in. Same with these. There's a lot of stuff you can do, a lot of stuff you can do. Like Doom Eternal with ray tracing, where you can see the reflection of the world in certain objects. That would be really cool to implement. So next up is Idoma. This is a bit more of a map that has some natural looking stuff to it. It has some nice green colors there, which I think is the global illumination. So yep, you can see that. You've got the lights, and then you've got the light bouncing from the greenery causing some nice global illumination and shadowing. All seamless, because it's being done with the same algorithm rather than separate algorithms. So yeah, the shadowing, the global illumination, ambient occlusion, all blending together 
seamlessly. But again, you've got some issues with the water here, looking a bit funky. RTX Remix is trying to do some sort of opaque fraction with that. A few oddities with the lighting on the side here. But generally, you've got all dynamic lighting, global illumination. With DLS frame generation on, it's a lot better, but does introduce a whole load of input lag. Some games don't suffer too badly with DLSS 3 and input lag. I'm guessing there's so much going on here in terms of RTX Remix and all the other stuff going on. Multiple wrappers from DirectX 8 all the way to Vulkan. DLSS 3 just is going to add a lot of input lag. But again, it's a good example of how good the game can look. It'd be really cool for someone to do RTX Remix for the original Unreal, I'm thinking now. That'd be very, very cool. Next up is Iron Dust. This is a map where the floor looks a bit too shiny here, but there's some nice lighting here. Got a light there with a direct shadow there. Really nice soft shadow. This wall would be really cool to get some bump mapping on it. See some texture glitches and some stuff blanking out there. Big old light source here. Really nice shadow. Some areas look a bit flat, but then some areas do look really, really nice with the dynamic lighting in there. Oh, and you can see just the level disappearing and I think just the skybox remaining. Those sort of weird fake volumetric lights with a weird opaque sort of texture on them now. Some really nice shadowing there. You've got the bright light there and then the shadow coming from this bit. But again, as that light gets cold, that shadow disappears, unfortunately. You've got some of the light from there going through that opaque bit, which isn't quite accurate. You wouldn't really see that, but it's just cool that RTX Remix picks up on it. Another thing I've noticed is that the game will randomly crash pretty badly every now and then, which makes sense given the amount of changes we've making to the game engine in real time. Hopefully as the mod evolves and RTX Remix evolves, that can get a bit more stable with these older games. So next up is DM Serpentine, which is an Egyptian map. So this looks really, really cool. In some areas, again, it looks a bit flat, but if we look at this area here, and again, it will occasionally completely disappeared to darkness. But here, this looks really nice. If we go to, again, white space materials, you can see all the extra lighting that's being added there. See, the Egyptian maps are where it's gonna look really, really cool. Again, you've got a bit of weird culling here where some of the shadows disappear, but generally this lower area here is shadowed nicely versus these lights, these lights here. And every now and then the lighting resets and goes weird as the remix picks up different things from the engine. Really nice shadow from that spinning bit in the middle there. Look at that. Because I think that's the shadow being created from all the lights around it as it turns around. Yeah, look at that. It's like a double shadow from all the lights coming around it. And of course, you've got the lighting up here, the purple lighting there, having an effect. Next up is DM Spirit. Really nice lighting here. Again, a bit overexposed, but it shows off the shadowing really nicely as that's spinning around. Self-shadowing on the gun, loads of bloom. It's one of those levels where things will just randomly black out when you face certain directions for some reason. You've got some of the fog effects coming from here or smoke effects coming from here being a bit funky and the lighting just gets over bright then resets it's very strange i think it may be picking up on some sort of global lighting and becoming uh, overexposed and then you've got the local lighting here which looks a lot better and you've got a water surface here which uh rtx remix is interpreting in a weird way again then over to dm squatter this has got a similar issue where there's a bit too much overexposed lighting got a nice sort of uh transparent texture here which probably needs a bit of tweaking, but it shows off how cool glass could look in this game. And it shows off how dynamic RTX Remix can be in terms of interpreting different materials and textures. Because Reshade obviously can't get that much access to textures. It can't identify them. It can't apply different, at least at the moment, it can't apply different materials to different textures. Whereas RTX Remix has a bit more of a deeper integration with the calls coming from the original game engine. Again, some weird stuff with lights here kicking in, being culled. Similar to what we saw in uh, Max Payne RTX Remix. So as you move through a level, you can see the lighting change. So hopefully there's a way around that. Maybe there isn't, because it's such an old game engine, I don't know. So that's another cool level. Let's check out some Asbestos. So this is a really cool level where it's a bit more of a darker, dank sort of level. But you've got some really nice shadowing here. Really adds an atmosphere to it. Some funky stuff going on with some of the textures. Nice shadowing added there. Some really nice global illumination shadowing going on here. If we just stand here, you can see all the shadowing there from the little adrenaline. The darker areas from all the ambient occlusion. Trouble is though, again, the water surface here doesn't seem to have any texture to it. Other than that, looks really nice. Next up is Goop God. It's a bit more of a gnarly sort of area here. Again, looks a bit flat, bit over bright in some ways. But you have got some really nice shadowing and lighting. 
and yep as you go to certain parts of the level the lighting just completely goes areas like this look pretty damn good sort of mix of green and orange lighting bouncing around there and these lower areas here plenty of lighting plenty of shadowing just a missing texture on the floor there some of the gnarly areas could look incredible that's why I'd love to see the original Unreal getting RTX Remix. So not a lot to see on that level, just a bit of a preview of what a gnarly area could look like. Now we have DM Compressed, has some of the funky textures here. For some reason it's treating that texture as completely metallic, and then getting closer to the actual texture reappears. Odd stuff happening. Just got some really nice shading up here. Some cool additions, but can look a little bit flat in some places. And again, random lights appearing as you get closer. Which is really cool because you've got the shadowing here. It's just funny how these lights just appear. Oh yeah, some really weird texture stuff going on there. Next up is a classic Curse 4, which does just about work. You do keep seeing the skybox every now and then, but you have really cool areas with some really nice shading. This is always a cool map to look at for ray tracing sort of stuff. Because there's so many different colours and shading. The smoke effects are actually running okay on this map for some reason. Shadowing on the bricks there, nice lighting there, looks really, ooh look at that. Look at that, that's really nice. Ooh, I think this is also allowing for HDR lighting as well, I believe. Which is why you can have some much more deeper looking lighting. It looks a lot more impressive than the original game, look at that. Bit too much shine there. I think the floor's okay because it kind of looks like shiny wood, but the stone, maybe a little less shine, but still, looks great. Oh, really nice shadowing there. Look at that. That's cool. If we go to the material mode and put white space materials on, you can actually see there's multiple shadows here. It's not so obvious with the textures on. It's a bit more subtle, but here you can see there's a shadow there and a shadow there and a shadow there from this adrenaline due to all the different lighting, which is so cool. Because obviously you've got different light sources causing multiple different shadows. And I think you can even see the shadow from this adrenaline there. So there must be a light source coming from here causing that shadow going across. And yeah, back to normal textures. Very, very subtle. You can still sort of see it. But it's subtle stuff like that that just looks awesome. I think the one thing that would be very cool to do is to get RTX Remix to recognize the water and apply water caustics if that's possible. Because yeah, there's the fake caustics, which it looks like it's trying to do something with, but it's uh, not having a good time with it. You got the dragon head here. Now we're over for a quick look at Grendel Keep, which is a map where again it will keep blanking out for some reason, but it does have some cool looking areas. A bit too shiny in places and some missing water effects, but if we get to the right position here we can kind of see how much nicer it can make the map look. I think it just needs some of the shininess reflectivity turned down on these textures. But it is adding some really nice lighting to the guns there. And you can imagine with a few tweaks, it could make the sort of rainy wet effect look even more realistic. The soft sort of ambient occlusion look can kind of help with rainy sort of levels. It kind of gives it an overcast look. But you can sort of tweak that in path tracing so you can have really soft lighting when you need it, but also really harsh lighting when you need it. And a nice blend between both of them, as well as global illumination, stuff like that. So I think with a few tweaks, this map could really feel like a very rainy map and give it that atmosphere. Next up is DM Ironic, which is a little bit of a cleaner level. It's got some soft lighting in places, some harsh shadowing in some places. Some really nice shadowing here from this platform. Going down there, that looks really cool. And this sort of cool glass effect up here, which is awesome. Just looks a little bit over bright in some places. And there's some weird text glitching stuff going on. It's another good example of where the shadowing and lighting can look really cool. And it's also an example of where, where the textures are really clean. You can start to get sort of photorealistic. Like if you squint a bit, that almost looks like a photo of a sort of overgrown factory somewhere. Some really cool shadowing here. I just love this glass effect here. That's really cool. Those shadows and global illumination combined with making some of these textures metallic. You can have some reflections in there. Oh yeah, got this nice long shadow from the adrenaline there coming from that light. Physically accurate lighting, very very nice. So next up we have another Egyptian map, Osiris 2. Now I don't think this one is entirely stable. Yeah, yeah, it will blank out at certain points. But lower areas like this look very very nice with all the shadowing and lighting in. See texture on the floor there. Oh yeah, but this area, look at that. Oh, that's nice. Really strange material here. 
that is odd. I don't know what RTX Remix is doing there. A little bit overexposed, but very, very cool looking nonetheless. There we go, it's a little less overbright now. And as we've sort of reset the lighting again, I don't know what happens there, but the sort of HDR look there really helping out Bloom. The sort of shadow from that ammo box there being sharpened off as it's getting light from both sides. Oh, it's gone overbright again. It's so strange how RTX Remix is interpreting this game. I've also turned the HUD off, as you can see, to give a bit more of a clearer look. But again, yeah. Another look at how these levels could be enhanced, and I imagine the mod is going to evolve pretty fast. RTX Remix will evolve pretty fast, but also the config file that the modder has been working on specifically for this game will improve over time as they add in textures and stuff. Over we head to Flux 2, It's a very industrial looking metallic map. Some really nice lighting, but again some weird stuff going on when it becomes overexposed for some reason. But you've got lots of nice lighting from here, There's those beams causing shadows, again being culled as you turn away unfortunately. I think it's geometry culling as well, so that geometry is there causing a shadow, but when you turn away it gets culled and the shadow disappears. More soft shadowing here. Yeah, quite a small map there. Over to another small map, Gael. This one's got a cool little effect on it. So if we go over here, you can see all the cool shadowing, all the stuff we've seen before. But there's a bit here where there's a fan or something moving through here, causing a dynamic shadow. I think it's something to do with this fan up here. But again, at certain angles, the shadow will just disappear. That's another example of how you can get some really cool dynamic lighting. Not 100% sure what's causing it, but more benefits of just purely dynamic lighting. Another example of it there. Uh, I think that light is meant to be a spinning light, but it doesn't look quite right there. The mix of different lighting there, shadowing, very, very nice. But that's the highlight of this map. Ice Tomb is one we've looked at before with Reshade. This is one where the shadowing and lighting looks really, really cool. I think what would make this look amazing is to add some textures in to make them PBR based and add in some subsurface scattering with the ice. I think that would look incredible. So you could have subsurface scattering reflections and uh, refractions in the ice. That would be really, really beautiful. And then you could add in some path trace water caustics there from that water. And it works really nicely with this geometry here, adding in some really nice shadowing and shading. So this looks good, but it could be massively improved just by updating some of these textures because the floor here is real geometry. It adds in all that lovely shading. Got a lovely, nice soft shadow there coming from that flak rifle as it spins around. Nice purple glow coming through these boards here. And again, another really nice shadow coming from this. Oh yeah, look at this. How funky does that look? So yeah, a lot of potential with this map. We go over to Insidious, bit of overexposure, similar to some of the other levels we've seen. It does work pretty consistently. Again, there's some weird stuff going on here. I think that might be another sort of fake effect the game engine's doing from the water here. Yeah, it's probably fake core sticks again that RTX Remix is struggling with. This area looks really cool though. I think the lighting has been really enhanced here with the green sort of glow and the red sort of glow from the lava. That just looks awesome. That looks really cool. And the purple lights up here down this corridor. Look at the shadow coming from that bio rifle. Really, really cool. Excellent. Excellent looking stuff. So then we have Leviathan, which looks similar to a few of the other levels we looked at. And again, has that weird problem with some of the shadowing and lighting being culled and disappearing and appearing generally in the central sort of area. Looks beautiful. So when the lighting's working, when you've got lighting coming with this metal grid here, you've got the dynamic lighting coming out, that's very cool. Yeah, that's not baked in because it keep, it disappears as it goes off screen. Yeah, and the light coming from here causing other grid shadows. Really soft as well, really accurate. A real classic here, Phobos 2, which doesn't fully work, but the reason why I want to look at this was because it does seem to be adding path tracing to the skybox elements, which is really, really cool. So you can see some shadows and shading on these asteroids and stuff here. You can actually see what it's doing there. So yeah, you can see the shadowing path tracing it's adding there. So even though we can't play the game, we can still see how it's affecting the skybox. It's just very strange, you just can't see any of the level, we can just see the gun and the skybox. Cool, you can path trace the skybox a little bit. Then we go over to Plunge, which is quite an open sort of map, but seems to work for whatever reason. Some cool shadowing here, adds a nice bit of depth. This level is similar to Morpheus, but I couldn't get Morpheus 3 to work, but this map will for some reason. It does look really, really cool, especially with these different coloured areas. I think all that shadowing there is being done by real, in real time. Same with down here. And there you go, some nice shadowing up there. 
shadow from that pillar being caused by that light there. Lots of global illumination going on. You can see a bit more of that if we go to white material textures. So you can see how the light is bouncing. Multiple bounces. Spreading that light around. Multiple shadows. Go over to Rajagar, which I think is the level that has glowing crystals on it. it. Looks like the crystals are being interpreted as a kind of strange material. And they're not glowing as they should be. And then you've got the weird sort of water effect down here, where it's... Uh, Applying some kind of effect to that. <laughs> Got some nice dynamic lighting here from the wheel as it turns. Even just the shadowing here down these tunnels and stuff. The extra path traced shading makes it look really, really nice. Gives it a lot more depth than the original game. And the foliage here, like the leaves and stuff, nice extra shadowing on them. It's not perfect, it's still a bit glitchy, but it already adds a lot of depth. And then we got Takara Forest, which has some really cool lighting on it. I think it should be brighter than this. Again, I think it's not picking up some of the more global lighting, but these point lights here, these local lights, illuminating very, very nicely. You can imagine how these tree textures would look really cool with uh, bump mapping and some physically based rendering on them. Got a really soft kind of lighting here. Which looks really, really, really cool. Nice soft shadow there. From the shock rifle there. And again, you can actually see the lights turning on as you get close to them. That's some really nice water effect there. Oh, yeah. I think that's part of the original game, but you can imagine how with a bit of bump mapping added to that and some caustics, that would look really, really cool. And then this texture here, I have no idea what's going on here. Don't even know what that's supposed to look like in the actual game. Looks like it's turned that tree into a bit of metal or glass or something. It's when multiple light sources start kicking in with this kind of complex geometry, that's when it starts to look really, really cool. It just needs those distant textures sorted and some of the more ambient lighting fixing up a little bit, I think. Now we move over to CTF maps. First one is Avarice. It's another map where when you look in certain directions, it just completely blanks out, but you can get a really good view. Some missing textures, but you can get a really good view of how it can make the Egyptian maps look very, very cool. So it's a shame we can't get phase three working on this. The game just again completely crashed out on me there, but that is Avarice, looks really cool. Next up is Bridge of Fate. So some of the areas in this look a bit flat. And then you've got areas like this, which look really cool. Multiple lights, multiple shadows, adding a lot of depth. That sort of HDR lighting effect, bloom, really gives some depth to that area. Whereas this area just looks a lot more flat, I think, because some of the ambient lighting and stuff probably need tweaking. But you've still got shadows behind these big pillars here, which looks really cool. And this area has a bit more depth to it because of the shadowing from the lighting. There's even a kind of outside area here, which is, again, where the lighting seems to completely die. A lot of shadowing, lighting, depth. And then, ironically, some parts look really flat. Head over to Chrome. It's a map with a lot of shadowing on it. Look at that. That's very, very cool. Lots of lighting, lots of shadowing, lots of things going on. So it's fine when you're still, it's just when you move around, you see all that culling coming in and changing the shadow and lighting as you move around. It really elevates the look of the map to look a lot more dynamic. And again, it would benefit from updating those textures. Some really nice soft shadows here from these. It's where sometimes the subtleness of the effect has a lot more of an impact than some of the more obvious sort of shiny bits of path tracing. You have some weird lighting effect going on there. And there should be shadows coming out from there, but I don't think it's picking up on that as a light source. It's a shame Citadel doesn't work, so we're going to have to skip all the way to double damage. That would have been cool to see Citadel working, especially if it picked up on the lightning as a light source and uh, gave some dynamic shadows, but unfortunately not. Another cool level. Whoa. Oh, but the skybox then comes in for some reason. Adds in lighting and shadowing. I don't even know where that skybox is coming from, but there you go. Bit of a glitchy map. You can really see the dynamic lighting on the, the weapon there. But if we just stand here like this and go white material textures, you can see all of the lighting that's happening there. So you've got quite a bit of a red light, I think, from that red flag. And there's a lot of global illumination there, shadowing. Really nice shadowing from these bits here. And it's starting to give it that sort of Unreal Engine 4, maybe even slightly Unreal Engine 5 look. as that really natural lighting and shadowing. We will skip all the way to Orbital 2, which is similar to some of the other levels we've seen. Some nice cool lighting here from this red screen. Really nice shadowing. Really nice shadowing in here. And lots of multiple light sources. One of the more stable maps. 
if we look at the materials we can see that those blue effects on the wall there aren't being counted as light sources it'd be cool to get those counted as light sources get some real-time lighting bouncing off of that makes this map look really really beautiful again gives it a lot more depth it certainly makes it look a hell of a lot newer I think one of the really big differences, as I say, will be getting really reflective textures, physically based metal. That would really update the look as well. Now we have a look at Smote, which is quite unstable, but we okay. might be able to get to an area where we can see some textures. There we go. Right. Really nice internal area here. Very nice lighting. Even makes some of those textures look a lot more realistic. Let's see if we can explore around a little bit more. Oh, and it's crashed. So yeah, it crashed there again. This is quite unstable. It's crashed quite a few times by now. But areas like this, you can really see the addition of all that shadowing and lighting, adding a lot of atmosphere. Very, very nice. It's just a shame everywhere we go, it seems to just completely black out. Makes the wood textures look really nice. Anyway, let's move on to the next level before it crashes again. Now we are moving on to domination. Let's try out access. Lots of cool lighting here. A lot of depth to the scene. Another one where updating the textures would really have a difference, but you can see some really cool shadowing here. Come from up here as that light source comes down, but unfortunately it gets occluded and disappears at certain angles. But it's just cool that that shadow is there, coming from that light up there, making that shadow through that grate. Again, more shadow culling, lights appearing, the gun randomly disappearing for some reason. That's the cool bit though, the really cool bit, these, the lighting from those grates causing those shadows. It's just a shame it's not very consistent. Now we're going to Dom Conduit. And these are the only two maps I found that would work here, which is a shame because Sun Temple would look amazing, I think. But let's go over to Conduit. And this one has some really interesting stuff on it. So we've got some plain glass there. Some really cool shadowing there. We've got some weird effects from these things. But it's having some really cool lighting. Look at that. That shadow coming from that. And if we go to white material textures. Ah, okay. That is something from the engine itself, not from the path tracing. That's cool though. That still looks really good. It complements the ray tracing really well. Oh, some more cool sort of glassy effects up there. And a pretty stable map for the most part. Hasn't blanked out on me yet. I love that refraction. You can see the light there and then it being refracted through that sort of opaque glass effect. That's cool. And it's going through it twice as well. So you've got the you've got the light going through one layer of the glass and then through another layer of the glass. It's really cool. Really cool how Remix can do that. Look at that. Oh, that is awesome. Now, whether those materials are meant to look like that or not, I don't know. But it just shows what Remix can do, even though the original game engine would have had no concept of that, really. We're over to the last two levels, which are Bombing Run, which is Anubis. It's a bit of a weird level in that uh, the lighting is a bit funky and it doesn't always work. But you can, I found from certain angles, get some cool looking effects like here, all that lighting shadowing. And if we go to white material textures, you can see exactly what all that lighting is doing in the path tracing. So all those lights on the floor, the shadowing of those statues, multiple shadows from them, ambient occlusion. It's just a shame the image is so unstable and keeps cutting out. Very, very cool. Another sort of preview of what these Egyptian levels can look like. It's just a shame. They seem to be the most unstable at the moment. And finally, the last working map that I found is Slaughterhouse, which has some interesting lighting on it because it's very, very dark, Yay. very, very shadowy. That is very much complemented by the path tracing. It's a little bit unstable in that the skybox will just randomly appear at times. And this area is incredibly bright. My God, but there is a lot of cool shadowing there. These rust textures could look really, really cool when they're getting upscaled by RTX Remix. There you go, some dynamic shadowing coming from that gear turning there. So yeah, those are all of the working maps. So hopefully over time more become compatible as there's textures been remade and added in through RTX Remix and as the configuration file gets adjusted. Now let's go back to deck 17. Now what I want to do here is play around with some of the roughness and metallic sliders. We go to parameter tuning, we go to material options. We can start messing around with the metallic scale, metallic bias. Turning that bias up, we can turn down some of the over brightness. We can also turn down the roughness scale. Oh, look at that. That is insane. Wow. That's cool. Normal strength doesn't do anything because I don't think there's any surface normals to go off of. 
Albedo bias. Whoa, look at that. Oh my god. Let's leave that at zero. So you can just make things look ridiculously shiny and metallic. That is so over the top. That's funny. If you could specifically make the metal that shiny and everything else not so overly shiny, you could make these levels look really cool. Turn the roughness up a little bit. There, metallic bias. That looks kind of cool. But yeah, you can basically, if you crank it up high enough, you can essentially make it look like everything's a mirrored surface. I'm going to have to spend some time really tweaking this. There's so many settings here, it is insane. And on top of that, there's also newer versions of Reshade and Mike McFly's shaders that they've been working on that adds in a whole bunch of extra stuff from the Reshade perspective. So that's another thing I need to check out with this game as well, as this keeps evolving. I think I said before in a previous video, it's going to be quite a busy year looking at RTX stuff for this channel. If you like that, please do leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you think of RTX Remix. And do you know of any other games that are currently working with RTX Remix that you want me to check out. Keep an eye out for future videos of RTX Remix. I've got a tech project with Raspberry Pi coming up very soon, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching, I hope everyone's staying safe, and I will see you in the next video.